Hello everyone, I'm Gas Master on Sam for you today and welcome to something very new and different than what I would normally do. Today what I'm going to do is a Valve source code tutorial and what I'm going to demonstrate in this episode zero if you will is essentially installing the code and being able to compile it to at least get into a position to create client and server .dll files for your mod for Half-Life 2 in this case. So the first thing you want to do is install the Source SDK Base 2013 from Steam. Now this is split into two branches, one of which which is a single player branch and the other which is multiplayer. Uh, it goes without saying that if you're doing a one player mod then choose the single player and if you're doing more than one players then choose the multiplayer. As simple as that really. Uh, but though what I would say, a little caveat, is that if you are going to use the single player branch then it may help to opt into the beta. So you just right click on the single player once it's downloaded, go under properties, beta and then uh, select the upcoming beta because that is what you need to do to get the single player to work and I think that is more so from a debugging perspective. Though I'm not going to go over how you set up debugging, there's the Valve uh, developer wiki, the programming section that tells you all the information you need to know about getting your mod set up and all that sort of stuff. So next up, once you've downloaded the Source SDK Base 2013 single player or multiplayer, uh, what you want to do is download the uh, actual source code. So there's a GitHub link. So it's github.com forward slash valve software forward slash source SDK 2013. I'll link it in the description below and the page for the uh, source SDK 2013, which this tutorial is based off of. But um, essentially you can just download the zip of that and um, that's going to be the source code. And that's going to include both single player and multiplayer branches of the code. So once you have downloaded that, you want to... Um, get into installing Visual Studio. Now in this case what I'm going to do is download the Visual Studio 2013 because we are dealing with 2013 source code and you might think that getting the most recent version of Visual Studio is better and I guess for more recent stuff like new games and all that then yeah you might want to but because as I said this is 2013 code there's going to be a whole lot of uh, you know problems with the code and you'll get a lot of errors saying that stuff's not right so it's easiest to just deal with the Visual Studio 2013 code and uh, there's going to be a bit where it's going to say like what sort of packages you want to add onto your installation I would say just pick the, uh, the one with C++ in it since the Valve source code is C++ so you want to just select that and deselect all the others I guess and go for the installation process for me it took a while so be prepared to just sit around and do nothing for a long time for that. And once that's installed you want to download the Multibyte F F MFC library, excuse me I can't talk today. Um, but yeah that is just another package that Visual Studio is going to use to be able to um, be able to you know use the source code properly. So that should be all of the installation stuff uh, for Visual Studio at least right now to be able to at least open the project up but there is something else that we need to download and that is Microsoft Speech SDK. Now when you download this, this is going to be a sort of like compressed folder so once you download it, it's going to say okay where do you want to extract this to so you want to extract it to wherever you want to extract it to and then run the installer that is contained within it and it should go to somewhere like uh, Program Files x86 Microsoft Speech SDK 5.1 and you want to copy all of the files that are in that directory over to your um, well either single player or multiplayer in the source code that you downloaded which that might be in a compressed file format as well so you want to expand that out and uncompress it but um, if you're doing a single player mod then you'll have an SP folder and that's what you use and if it's a multiplayer mod then you use the MP folder but um, in my case I'm doing a single player mod so you want to copy the stuff from the Microsoft Speech SDK 5.1 folder to your SRC slash utils folder 
and in there you want to create a folder called SAPI51, S-A-P-I-51, and paste all of the uh, stuff in there. So it should go SP, in my case, SP, SRC, Utils, SAPI51, and then in the SAPI51 folder contains the stuff from the Microsoft Speech SDK 5.1 folders. Uh, or yeah, that directory. So that is necessary for stuff to compile properly, basically. So once you've done that, you can go into the include folder and open up sphelper.h. And there are some important changes that we need to make to this file before we can begin to use our codes. Otherwise, it'll throw up error codes on compile, which is bad. So first off, we want to go to line 769 and you want to add in a size T. So it's const size T ul ln vendor preferred blah 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 you want to go to line 1418 and add in a long so it's static long comim copy wfex etc then you want to go to line 2368 and you just want to rework it so the stuff that is in the for loop you put above it so that's the const w char asterisk psz blah 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 you move that outside of the for loop. Then you want to go down to line 2560 and recast the line here because it is uh, an improper casting. So you want it to be SP phone ID asterisk, P phone ID equals, and then in brackets, SP phone ID star. And then in sort of like two left brackets, W char star, one left bracket. DS phone ID, another right bracket to properly cast that line. Then in line 2634, you want to rewrite this line as well because this is another improper casting. So it should say uh, P phone ID plus equals WCS len, then two left brackets, const W char underscore T, asterisk, right bracket, P phone ID, right bracket plus one. So that is, you want to save that file at this point, and that should be all of the uh, code and from this point of view that we need to fix up for the code to actually compile properly. So in your single player or multiplayer folder and under SRC, there's going to be two batch files, one called create all projects and create game projects. So what you want to do is run these batch files because that creates a Visual Studio solution, which one is called everything and the other is called game. And so the game is what you're gonna be using mostly since that's what contains all the game stuff. But everything contains stuff like custom builds, um, you know, executable files like VBSP, VViz, VRAD and all that. Um, and that goes down the route of doing custom shaders and stuff like that as well. But um, if you just want to modify game code, then you want to use the game solution. But it's best to create both that you know both files. Uh, then you want to go and open up the everything solution. And when you load it up, you should see all of the projects on the left hand side, like client HL2, client episodic, server HL2, server episodic, the vviz, vbsp, and all that. Uh, you want to right click at the top to select all of the projects and um, well, make sure all of the projects are selected and then where it says debug, you wanna change that to release and then you wanna right click on the everything solution and build the solution. So if you followed all of the steps properly up until this point, then yeah, there might be some projects that don't succeed, but the client and server projects build correctly. So you can actually go to your, um, you know, MP or SP directory, and there should be another folder that you can go into. And in this case, it's actually going to be the game folder. And under game, you can go to mod episodic or mod HL2. And um, it, again, it depends on what kind of uh, project you want to make. If you want to deal with the Half-Life 2 code, then you'll do mod HL2. And if you want to deal with more episodic code, then you do mod episodic. But in my case, I'll go to mod HL2 
then if you go under the bin folder, then you should see you've got your clients and server.dll files here, along with a file called gameshaderdx9, which is um, where you'd have to include that if you want to include custom shaders, which I'm not going to get into because I really don't know how to do that. But um, that would be where your client and server.dll files go to, which is what you need to be able to run your mod, and that contains all your custom code in that. So that is pretty much all you need to do as i said i'm not going to get into the debugging side of things or how to fix up your project to be able to debug the only thing i would say is that you probably would need some game files in your game folder for your mod hl2 or mod episodic um you know you need some stuff in there to be able to run the project otherwise it's just gonna like crash and it, you're not gonna be able to do anything and as I mentioned earlier, for the single player branch, you want to opt into the uh, upcoming beta because that would, yeah, you know, that's like a necessity to be able to debug the code. But um, you should be in a position at this point to make changes to the code and compile it successfully and be able to put that into a mod folder and basically play what you have um, made essentially at this point. So I hope you found this helpful. Hopefully in the next tutorial and some very few tutorials after this, I'll go into some stuff about the source code and what sort of stuff you can do and hopefully help you out with some things that I find interesting at least. Um, if you like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, dislike it. I'm Gav from Mastermind 4 Thank you for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Peace out and uh, see you later.